Hey guys, welcome back. We are working on a 2002 GMC Envoy that kind of kicked my butt today. Um, it's actually a comeback because previously the vehicle came in with an, an intermittent no start. And the only thing I could find was low voltage at a couple of the fuses coming from the ignition switch. So I replaced the ignition switch. I never got it to act up on me um, for the no start condition, but I did confirm low voltage coming from the ignition switch. And that's a very common issue on these. I was like, well, it's not acting up right now, but we know the ignition switch is bad, replaced it. It was gone for two or three weeks and the lady called today and said, it won't start, it's in the garage. Um, you want me to have it towed? We said, no, we'll run over right now and see if we can get it to act up. Tried starting it, would not start. Um, fuel gauge wasn't working. I hooked the scan tool up, no communication with any module. And we decided, well, we'll just push it out of the garage. We'll come back with the tow truck and grab it. And as soon as we went down the driveway um, onto the street, my dad was driving, running the steering wheel, and he said the gauges came to life, and then it fired right up. He drove it over to the shop, shut it off. It wouldn't start up again. So I hooked up to it. Um, still no communication. So that's when I started to break out the scope. Um, I grabbed the Triton at first. I'm going to use the Zeus for this because I've, I've already figured this out. I'm not going to mislead you guys and take you along with the Diag because I've got a couple hours of beating my head against the wall on this thing. So you're going to get the, the condensed version and we're going to look at it, the scope on the Zeus. So let me show you my setup right now just so it's uh, easier to understand where I'm connected. So I'm currently plugged into the data link connector underneath the dash using the Pico breakout box. And I have my scope connected to, um, the ground is connected to signal ground here or chassis ground, uh, pin five. And I have pin two, which is the data link for this system. This is a class two serial system. And I have pin two going to my scope. And then I have the Triton plugged in here just because the battery started getting low. Now, sometimes you don't want your scan tool plugged in while you're checking your signal lines because it can alter the, the signal lines a little bit because it may be injecting signal into here, trying to communicate with stuff. And if you have a dead line, it may look like you have activity, but it's actually the scan tool. Um, I did confirm that I have the same signal with and without the scan tool on this vehicle. So now let's take a look at the lab scope. I do have the Zeus set up. I'm on channel one. I have a scale of 20 volts. And I put quite a bit of time on the screen just because we're not really looking at the integrity of the data packets right now. We just want to see if we have a signal. I'm going to turn the key on and we had a little bit of a signal and then it went to 10 or 11 volts. I just turned the key back off and we are still stuck at that higher voltage. So this is kind of weird because this is behaving slightly different than it was before I grabbed the camera. And I'm kind of hoping that we can get to the same situation that I had earlier that led me down a strange rabbit hole. But we'll, we'll continue on and we'll see if this will act the way it was acting earlier. But so right now we're sitting at 11 volts. Okay, it just dropped back down. We have communication again. Let me just go ahead and try and start it. Go to start it and we are right back up at battery voltage on our communication line. So there's a couple things we can do here. One of them is unplug modules one at a time, but an easier way on this older uh, GM system, I'm not saying this vehicle is old because I work on much older stuff than this, but it's a 2002. It doesn't have a CAN communication network. Everything's on the class two single wire communication network. And they have these convenient things called splice packs. So let me pull up the wiring diagram, show you what the, the diagram looks like for the communications and show you where the splice pack is and how we're going to test it. So we're going to go into wiring diagrams. We're going to go to computer data lines, and this is going to give us our network wiring for this vehicle. So we have computer data lines um, over here on the right side of the screen. We can see our data link connector, pins four and five go to ground, which I'm surprised they go to the same grounding location. Normally one is a chassis ground, one is a sensor or engine ground. Uh, but this one, they both ground on the right side of the, the center console. And then here we have pin two, this purple wire. That's what I'm connected to with my scope. And it comes over here to this splice pack. Now this splice pack says uh, SP205 splice pack 
205. And then there's another splice pack that's tied into this splice pack, and it is number 206. Um, so we can see all of the modules that are connected to that. We have theft deterrent, power train control, body control, radio, instrument cluster, electronic brake control, transfer case, HVAC, auxiliary HVAC. And then on this upper splice pack, we have driver door module, driver seat module, passenger door module, passenger seat module, radio amplifier, vehicle communication inf interface module, and lift gate module. Now the lift gate module says with OnStar, which is kind of weird because this vehicle doesn't have a power lift gate, but it does have OnStar. So I'm not sure if it's equipped with this. I'm not sure if this little arrow is supposed to be over here with the vehicle communication interface, because this is normally what the uh, what the OnStar module is. If I if I remember correctly, you know we don't see a lot of issues with OnStar in my area, but we don't have any corrosion um, or they've all been replaced already. So that's what we're looking at. Um, real quick, I'm just going to see if it'll behave like it was earlier. Key on, and it's not doing it. It's just going straight to short. But I'll tell you, I'll tell you, if it doesn't act up, I'll tell you what was going on. So let's go ahead and take a look at this Splice Pack 205 and see if we can isolate which one of the circuits is causing this short to power on our communication network. So I have this lower trim panel pulled down, and connected to this lower trim panel is this. Uh, this is one of the splice packs. It's just a connector with all the wires going to it. Now, when I pulled the security clip off of it, the splicing bar actually stayed inside of that connector. Um, so if I just stick my screwdriver in here, I actually a pocket pry bar, I can pop this little bar out. And that's just a shorting bar that connects all of those wires together. So if we look at our scope now, our scope is, is pretty much dead. We, don't, we have no activity because we removed all of the modules from the data link connector. None of these modules are now communicating on the data link connector. So what we can do from here is, I'm just gonna unplug my wire from the breakout box. I'm just gonna put a little uh, wire adapter here. This is from AES Wave. And I'm just gonna go pin by pin until we see if we have a communication line here that is shorted. And if we're lucky, we'll find out which one is causing our network to short to, to power. So I'm just going to go one at a time. Got a little spike. Every once in a while that one spikes up so we have communication there. Nothing going on there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Okay that one right there it jumped up to 12 volts or almost a 12 volts battery voltage. Now that is a blue with a white wire. Um, the fifth pin over. So I'm just gonna continue down the line to make sure we don't have more than one module causing issues. That one's good. That one's good. That one's good. A little bit of activity here. Good and good. So just this one pin, this blue with the white wire. Now let's go back to our diagram, see what module that goes to. So looking at our splice pack here. Um, the dark blue with a white wire is the bridge between splice pack 205 and splice pack 206. So this is where we need to go find splice pack 206 now. Um, if I click on this diagram using Mitchell here, it'll actually open it up. I normally don't open it up just because it's easier for me to, to scroll without clicking on it. But I'm gonna click on splice pack 206 and we'll see if it gives us the location for it. Click on component location. And I've had some issues finding parts of the diagram while looking at this vehicle. Nothing came up, so I'm gonna close that out. And we're just gonna go back to the home page. We're gonna search for SP206 to find out where that second splice pack is. 206 is located in the body harness near the rear of the right rear seat under the carpet. That doesn't sound like much fun. So I kind of ignored this and uh, and looked, looked elsewhere because there was junk in the back, there was junk on the seat. I skipped going to this splice pack. I probably should have just went straight here because it would have made my life a whole lot easier. Um, let me turn the key off. I'm gonna see if I can get it to, to do what it was doing earlier. 
Uh, we might get lucky, we might not, but I'm hoping that we can get lucky and get this to act up the same way it was acting up earlier, which will lead me to a very particular case of going down the rabbit hole the wrong direction. Nope, it's not gonna behave. So what was happening earlier is the, mo the network went back to normal. Everything was working perfect. And I couldn't explain why. And I couldn't get it to act up until I opened the door and I, I decided to check the wires in the door jam because it, in splice pack 206, so let's look at the diagram. Like I said earlier, we have the driver seat module, passenger seat module, the both door modules, um, the lift gate module, OnStar. So I was like, well, easy to get to stuff that I can unplug, see if my communication comes back. Driver door, easy to unplug. Passenger door, easy to unplug. Seat modules, easy to unplug. So I knelt down to unplug the driver door, and as soon as I touched the harness, I accidentally bumped the seat. As soon as it started to move, my network shorted to voltage. So I'm like, okay, well, was it because I touched the seat or because I touched the door jam? And I got it to be very repeatable, and I'm not sure why it's not repeating now, but what would happen is as soon as I would move the seat cushion up or down, the network would short to power. So I unplugged the seat and it doesn't do it. I cannot get this network to short to power. Very, very predictable. Over and over, I let the vehicle run for 20 minutes, wouldn't short, move the switch, nothing happens because there's no power to the switch. As soon as I plug that connector in and move the seat, that's when my network gets shorter to power. So now it's not doing that. Now it's just going straight to short to power and it's to the point where I can't demonstrate that. But it, I've, I've spent about half an hour trying to find broken wires under the seat. I'm plugging the seat. I even unpinned the data connector from under the seat. And still, as soon as I would move the seat, it would get shorted to power. I'm plugging the seat. Once it's shorted, didn't change anything. So finally, I'm like, you know what? I need to go find this splice pack because I unplugged the mirror. I don't know if the OnStar module is built into the mirror, but I unplugged the mirror. Um, still shorted the power. So I finally found the splice pack in the back of the vehicle. Let's jump back there and take a look. So all I had to do was move some junk out of the way. Um, it wasn't actually at the back corner like the diagram showed underneath this bracket. It's just right here underneath the seat by the jack. So I just had to move some junk, flip the seat up, pull this carpet flap up, and here is the other splice pack. So now that we have this splice pack accessible, we can unplug this splice pack, plug in the front splice pack, and see what our network looks like. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to go straight to this connector and we're gonna go pin by pin. Um, I just pulled my lead from the front. We're gonna go back here, go pin by pin and see which one's causing the network to short. So we know with our blue with the white, just to make sure we have connection with the network, is going to that front splice pack, which it is. We have a little bit of communication there. We have Nothing on that wire. Now that wire has slightly elevated voltage, but I don't see any communication on it. That one has slightly elevated voltage, but I don't see communication on it. And yeah, I'm, I'm just not seeing anything happen. Let's go ahead and plug this shorting bar back in. Let me just try and back probe here. So with it plugged in, I'm shorted out. But with it unplugged, we're not shorted, which is kind of strange. So I just added this block in here and I'm just gonna add the modules back to the network one by one because apparently if they're off the network, then they're not gonna short it out. So we got regular communication there. Regular communication there. And as soon as I touch that terminal, the network is shorted. Unplug it, it goes back to normal. Now if I remove this module from the entire network, that module doesn't show shorted. So it's only once it's connected to the network 
that it shorts. And actually, I just added it back and it's not acting up. Hey, Matt, can you move the seat? Because that's not going to do it either. <laughs> Oh, we must, must have fixed it. <laughs> well, everything's good there now. Um, so I'm not sure why, but I know that I was plugged into this light blue wire. So this, this is where it's kind of frustrating because it's not consistent acting up the same way every single time and it's this light blue wire right here so let's find out where that light blue wire goes so looking at this splice pack 206 the light blue wire goes to the lift gate module with OnStar now ran into another snag here let me open up this diagram we're going to click on the lift gate module component locations and it says lift gate control module and it just tells us fuse block stuff um a fuse that goes to the lift gate module but i want to know where the actual lift gate module is and it's not in here so let's hit the back button let's go to remove and replace that should tell us where it's at and it doesn't it switches to keyless entry so what I ended up doing is I just went over to Identifix, punched in lift gate module, found out that it's in the trunk, in the deck lid. Okay, now sorry it's super bright behind me. Um, so what I did is I opened the deck lid. I pulled the wiring boot between the deck lid and the body because there's normally a connector somewhere you can unplug. And when I pulled it apart, I actually found there's several broken wires. So those broken wires were causing the issue and for some reason whenever I'd move the driver's seat earlier it would cause it to act up um, like I said I could run the vehicle for 20 minutes without it acting up at all until I move the driver's seat and then now it's not even acting up at all which is kind of strange but there's the main power main ground is broken and this uh, this smaller orange wire that's normally a power wire as well uh, that might be ignition power but it is broken and I just have two wires still connected. So I'm just gonna go ahead and, you know, repair these wires and we'll test everything, make sure it's all good still and ship it. But earlier when it was acting up, if I actually just unplugged this connector, um, the problem would go away. So just kind of a strange thing, led me down the rabbit hole the wrong way. And the good thing is now we found what it is and we can get it taken care of for the customer, get them back on the road. Now, I know it's easy to say what you would have done or should have done, you know, after you've seen it done, but let me know in the comments down below the route that you guys would have went first. If you would have went straight to that star connector, even if it required pulling out the back seat, I know this one didn't, but in the component locations, it showed that I would have had to pull the back seat out because it was behind the carpet underneath the seat back bracket. Um, or if you would have just continue to unplug modules until you found out what it was. Um, now Identifix, when I've just looked in, uh, no communication, there was a long list of things from body control modules to driver door modules to PCMs, but there was several cases of lift gate modules on there. Since this vehicle didn't have a power lift gate, I assumed, um, shame on me for thinking that, but I assumed that there was no power lift gate module on this vehicle or lift gate module at all. And it looks like that lift gate module controls like the defroster and maybe the rear door lock actuator. And it's just communicated over the network to act activate those functions. So I'll go ahead and splice these wire up, wires up. Um, questions or comments, put those down below. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.